without objection. Thank you. I thank both of you for the time, and thank you for that wonderful presentation of the life of one of my predecessors, Herman Badillo. And so rather than get into the details that have already been mentioned, let me just tell you personally what it means to me, what he meant to me, and what this loss of his passing means to, to all of us. Herman came along at a time when Puerto Ricans in New York were seen as good, hardworking people, but uh, some people were not uh, crazy about the idea of us being in public office or in government. And he showed the way. Having been the valedictorian at law school, he came and he immediately got involved in local politics. It is said that by the age of 18, he was already running for local office in East Harlem. He became the first Bronx Borough President, that's equivalent to a county executive uh, of Puerto Rican background. And then he ran for Congress, being the first full voting member of Congress. And let me just explain that for a second. There's been a member of Congress from Puerto Rico since 1898, but none to, the, to this day has had full voting rights. He was the first one of Puerto Rican background with full voting rights in 1970. He left this place that he loved so much to become deputy mayor because he felt that he could make a difference in New York and he served under the administration of Ed Koch. During the time he was here, he helped to fund the Hispanic Congressional Caucus. He dealt with issues of, of uh, education and housing and just economic development for our community. But for those of us that were starting out, he stood as a giant. He stood at this tall man, which he was, who was totally bilingual, who could speak well, who could think well, who was so calm and yet so aggressive, and he inspired all of us. When I, I know that on the House floor we don't mention political campaigns, but it can be said that when I first ran in 1974 for the State Assembly, the assembly he was at my side, and that was part of who he was. He encouraged young people from the community from all walks of life to get involved in politics. And I remember he always used to tell me that make sure, one of the advices he gave me is, make sure the same thing everywhere you go. Don't play to that audience and then play to that audience because first of all, it's wrong and secondly, you'll get caught up in making a mistake or telling a lie. So make sure you say what you feel from the heart even if it upsets people. And so now in New York, it is very fashionable, although it takes hard work, for Latinos of all different groups to be members of the city council and the state assembly and the state senate and yes, the Congress. But when Herman came along, that wasn't the case. He opened those doors and he inspired all of us to become who we are today. I could not be a member of Congress now had he not shown the way that people like us could in fact be a member of Congress. And part of most of the district I represent used to be in his district. So this was a great loss to us. And by naming a post office, we can at least always have his name vivid and that respect vivid for this person who came from Puerto Rico, as it was said, who lost both his parents before the age of five, who came to New York with an aunt not speaking English hardly at all, and yet who excelled in school and became this figure that was nationally known. And so, Herman, we thank you for who you were. We thank you for your leadership. But most of all, we thank you for putting our community on the political map. And with that, I yield it back the rest of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from North Carolina is recognized. 